evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Wally Rowder. I'm your host for today's BizTalk 54, Business Continuity Management and the Way to Success. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm coming to you live from the city of Singapore, also known as Malayan City. Thank you for joining me. It's going five o'clock Singapore local time. I do ask that you switch on your video cameras, please. Make sure that your video cameras remain switched on throughout today's session. Please make sure that you remain in the session to the very end. Otherwise, no certificate of completion will be issued. If you want your certificate, you must remain in the session until the very last minute when I say goodbye. Thank you for joining me. Today, we're gonna to be talking about what is business continuity management. As you know, the world was recently struck with COVID-19 in late 2019, early 2020. The world came to an end. Business all over the world has lost millions and millions of dollars. Why did they lose millions? Is because no business in the world ever prepared for COVID-19. No one ever expected COVID-19 to strike the world. There's a few companies that reacted and were very successful, the like of Amazon, who grew its business 25 times the size it was before COVID-19, thanks to COVID-19. But they acted very quickly because they had plans in place to become the world's biggest e-commerce platform that were heading in the right direction. But when COVID-19 came, they had to accelerate much faster. They had to stop, pull up the brakes, put on the accelerator and go full steam ahead. So let's today learn what does it mean to be in a position to deal with disaster? What does it mean to be in a position for business to continue as normal should another COVID-19 come? To date, the world is puzzled. Some people in the world say that a certain country caused COVID-19. Scientists point at that country. That country denies it. If somebody caused COVID-19, they are certainly committed criminal genocide because millions of people around the world have died. If COVID-19 came as a result of you know, God's will or an unknown act, then businesses should have been better prepared for it. And that's a fact. Businesses all over the world failed. Food businesses all over the world never had delivery plans in place. Some companies didn't even know what an online store was. They weren't ready. Let's talk about business continuity management. Okay, what is business continuity management? Let's talk about it. What is it? Just one moment, please. What is business continuity management? Business continuity management is the discipline that businesses need to implement to have in place the right processes and procedures to deal with unexpected situations. Let's talk about it in more detail. Business continuity management, ladies and gentlemen, is a process of planning for disruptive incidents, whether it's a hurricane, whether it's a typhoon, whether it's an earthquake, whether it's a drought, or whether it's a disease like SARS or COVID-19. If businesses don't prepare and take steps to deal with the impact of such disaster, they will lose millions of dollars. It is estimated that between now and the end of this year, at least 30% of companies around the world will, if they haven't already, suffer bankruptcy or go into liquidation. Where do we get that figure from? That is the estimate being given by the finance sector who has lent money to companies all around the world to be able to survive via COVID-19. Now, both government economic analysts are saying that at least 30% more of the businesses that remain operable will face liquidation, 
or liquidity issues and have to revert to bankruptcy protection by the end of this year, December 31st this year, because they can no longer service their loans. They cannot generate the income they need to pay off the debts they caused during COVID-19 because they had no plans in place on how to deal with the disaster. Business continuity management provides the business an acceptable way to deal with its ongoing revenue and maintain income during a disaster. For example, if you're a restaurant and during a disaster like COVID or during a disaster like a typhoon where people cannot leave their homes, they need to have a platform where their food can reach their consumer at their doorstep not only deliver food, but make sure the food reaches the consumer hot, tasty, and edible. You all know what it's like to order food, and when it's delivered to you, it's cold. You can't eat it. You've wasted your money. So many companies were not prepared for it. They need to put in place continuity management plans and procedures in order to make sure that they can maintain their revenue and preserve their reputation. You might ask yourself, what sort of disasters can require the need for business continuity management? They can be volcanoes, earthquakes, hurricanes, natural disasters. They can be man-made disasters, such as a train accident that kills thousands, an aircraft crashing, a Boeing 747 crashing like MH370 or 307, whatever it was called, the one that crashed and was never found. All of these disasters need to have business continuity management plans in place. Malaysia Airlines is still suffering because no one trusts to fly with them after MH 337 or 370, whatever it was called, crashed and has never been found. Other disasters can be technological failures, such as uh, network breakdown. The bank's network breaks down and customers are unable to deposit or withdraw money. It could be human error, deletion of a company's database, deletion of its software, deletion of its auto. Um, artificial intelligence um, memory or control systems. Car factories can stop manufacturing cars in Japan if the artificial intelligence, the robots and the programming on how to build those cars is disrupted or corrupted. Infrastructural damage, such as a burst pipe, a fire, an explosion that burns your business or warehouse down. It could be sabotage. Somebody hacks your computers and steals your files. Somebody comes into your warehouse at night and sets it on fire. It could be cyber attacks where somebody steals all your data and wants a ransom, which makes it very hard for you to continue your business. All of these are disasters that require business continuity management to avoid the business failure. Let's now talk about this. Let's talk and see how much you people understand about what I mean by business continuity management. Let's start by asking some of the students that are here today, what does business continuity management mean to you? Can you give me an example based on your experience of a company that suffered as a result of COVID-19, because they had no business continuity management plans in place. Who would like to try to answer my question first? I see a lot of bright faces here today. I hope to get to talk to all of you. Let's start with Augustine, Augustine Corregidor. Hello, Mr. Augustine, how are you today? It's so good to see you again, sir. Welcome to the session. How are you? Hi, Augustine. Yes, sir, good afternoon. 
Good afternoon. Augustine, tell me, can you give me an example of a company that you know around the world that was not prepared for COVID-19? And can you tell me how you think that company suffered? As I um, remember here in, here in our country, Philippines, yeah. Yep. Uh, is um, any company the, the security industry right how did they suffer tell me about it because um, when when COVID-19 came yes uh, many of the uh, security guys the guards are um, uh, out of their duties. Yes. Uh, there has a retrenchment. Okay. So a lot of security guards became unemployed because security companies did not have electronic surveillance mechanisms where they could put their customers' warehouses under electronic surveillance. And that means the guards could sit at a desk and monitor the property. But because security companies did not have any alternative business method and plan, they had to retrench security guards. Is that correct? Yes, sir. There, there is a retrenchment. Uh uh impose or recommend by the right. employer yes the, uh, the 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 company the companies where the uh, security in industry uh are uh, with that with that company yes just because of uh the retrenchment of, um, of their employees so the effect of the security and safety might uh, might be slim. That's right. Thank you very much, Augustine. You're on the right track. There were, there were, there were gates there closed and they are only maintaining the one gate for incoming and then the one gate for outgoing and then the operations in the center are, uh, for example, two to three guards in uh, 24 hours by 7. Right. Thank you very much. That's a great explanation. Thank you, Augustine. I'll talk to you shortly. You. Augustine has given you a very pure example of an industry that suffered because most security guard industries were used to putting their guards to go and walk around factories and protect buildings. When COVID-19 came, there was lockdowns, buildings were unprotected because no one was allowed to go out. Security companies did not have alternative work method where the security guard could still sit at his computer and monitor that property because of cameras that were placed and linked back to a base. So these security guards or the security industry in general faced mass retrenchments. And until now, some of these guards have not got their job back because as a result of COVID-19, security companies learned that they also need to offer their customers an alternative. One is physical surveillance and two is electronic surveillance. So as a result of COVID-19, a lot of major businesses now have implemented very expensive electronic camera surveillance, which is linked back to a security company where one security guard sits in front of a big TV screen and monitors the whole building. They don't need 20 guards anymore. So the industry has suffered, but they only suffered because they weren't prepared. Let's look at another industry, the airline industry. When COVID-19 came, the airlines couldn't fly because they weren't allowed to go anywhere. So airlines did not, not know what to do with all their aircraft. Airlines like Philippine Airlines, Singapore Airlines, Emirates Airlines, Etihad Airways, some of the biggest airlines in the world had no room to keep all their aircraft because under a normal situation, most aircraft are in the air at least 90% of the normal day. They go down, they pick up passengers and they go up again. So aircraft spend most of their time operational in the sky. Suddenly, Singapore Airlines had 200 jets parked at Changi Airport. There was nowhere to park them. Changi Airport charged them rent for parking the aircraft on the ground. So Singapore Airlines had to fly 
all of its biggest fleet, A380s, all the way to a desert storage area in the outback of Australia, park the aircraft in the desert, lock them, cover them with um, cover the engines and leave them there for two years. Not only Singapore Airlines, but airlines all over the world. Airlines like Emirates have 300 aircraft. Where can they park 300 aircraft? 300 aircraft need like 30 football ovals to park them. You know how big an A380 is to park? So all these airlines had to park their fleets in the desert in Australia or in another desert in the US. They had to pay for storage because none of these airlines had a solution of what they could do with their passenger aircraft if a disaster came. After they stored their aircraft for one year or so, they found out that why don't we use the passenger flights and put cargo on them? Because now people are shopping online. So more boxes are coming out of China, more boxes and packages are coming out of Europe, going to consumers. Um, you know, students like Genevieve and uh, Roslyn may have bought makeup. They have, may have bought T-shirts, which are packed in small parcels. So airlines said, let's be smart. We'll take that cargo. And instead of putting it in the cargo hatch, we'll just put it on all the seats on the aircraft and fly the aircraft back and we'll make use of it. Some of the airlines took the seats out filled the cabin with cargo and started flying cargo to keep the engines running. That is all as a result of a disaster and because they had no business continuity plans in place. Does everybody understand that? Yes or no? I want everybody to wave their hands now. Wave your hands. Come on, I want to see hands waved. Excellent. Good stuff. Okay. All right. Good. Excellent. So what I want you to think of um, everyone, including Tran Kim, Roslyn, um, Yet Lin, uh, April, and Elisa, I want you to start thinking of businesses and how they suffered. And we'll talk about this more. Juanita Pilon, Welcome to today's session. You look very cute in your green hat, Juanita. Welcome to today's session. Switch off the poster, Juanita, and switch on your real camera. I don't want to see your poster. I want to see your real face, Juanita, if you want to get a certificate. Okay, so ladies and gentlemen, let's go on and learn more about business continuity management. So, as I said, there is many types of disasters, and we just spoke of some of them. So what is a disaster? As I said, it could be a natural man-made disaster. It could be a hurricane or a tornado. It could be a biohazard like COVID-19 or a chemical war. It could be an earthquake, or it could be a bombing. It could be it could even mean an aircraft like MH370 disappearing in the ocean. Okay, it could even mean rain that doesn't stop for 10 or 15 or 20 days. And countries start flooding because the drainage can't handle the rain. The sewers block. That would be a made man-made disaster because the sewers are blocked. Or if you have a volcano, it would be a natural disaster an earthquake, all of these things could require businesses, not could, would require businesses to have business continuity management plans if they were to survive. Threats, terrorist attacks. Look at what just happened in Russia. Russia took over another country. Russia attacked another country. As a result of that, Russia has suffered. Businesses in Russia have closed. They can no longer survive because they're not allowed to buy stock from overseas. They're not allowed to use bank transfer or deal in international currency. Companies like Starbucks, McDonald's, and all the big companies um, like Levi's, Esprit, all the big brands have stopped doing business in Russia because of the embargo placed on Russia. But now these businesses have no plans on how 
to overcome the financial loss. If you're no longer doing business in Russia and you've lost $20 million a year because you're not doing business in Russia and you don't have a plan on how to get that revenue somewhere else, then of course the business will suffer. All right, somebody is drawing on my screen. I'm not sure who it is, please. Could you remove the drawing of my slide, please, Govind? Govind? Thank you, Govind. All right, so as I said, let's look at it. Other realities, other common failures that companies are not prepared for. Power outage. You have a restaurant, you have a hospital, you have a factory. You don't have power generators. Software problems, your software in your factories, your software that you use to run your company, your software that you use to process your clients' transactions has got a virus. It has a Trojan in it. So your whole software stops. Floods, computer hardware problems. Another one is human error. Because you have someone that works for you, and as a result of a mistake they make, all right, you cannot operate your systems. For example, one of your staff by mistake deleted 200,000 files from your server that have all your customers' information. That would be an area or an IT disaster because you can't do business without that information. Fires and explosions. Lighting storms, hurricanes, volcanoes, telecommunication failures. For example, if you use a bank ATM and all the fiber optic communication between the bank and its ATM machines all over the country is disconnected, customers will not be able to deposit and withdraw money. So if banks don't have an alternate power source for their ATMs or an alternate way for their computers to communicate, they won't be able to service their customers. Again, Mr. Govan, there is lines on my screen. Could you please remove them? Thank you. So all of these are examples, examples of disasters for businesses, Rosalind. All of these are disasters for a business. Can you imagine going into a McDonald's restaurant and they say, we can't cook because all the electricity has been disconnected and we have no power station nearby. They would go out of business because they don't have a business continuity plan of having an electricity generator. You know in the Philippines that it's common for electricity to be cut off. Most businesses in the Philippines now have their own generators. Otherwise, they would lose so much money and it would affect their business. Again, Mr. Govan, somebody is putting lines on my screen. Please stop it. Thank you. All right. So common failures, everybody. Please write these down. Again, power outage. I want to see you all write it down. Let's do it. Software problems, floods, computer hardware, human error, fire and explosion, telecommunication failure, lighting storms, lightning storms, hurricanes, earthquakes, COVID-19. All of that are reasons for failure. All of these mean that a business has to plan ahead on how to deal with these issues. Business continuity management provides the business an ability to respond in a timely and efficient manner. If you don't wanna write it down, take a picture. It provides business to undertake the needed rescue operations to keep its business in plan, providing it has a plan allows the business to minimize their losses. It allows the business to facilitate a fully integrated multidisciplinary approach in the event of a disaster. For example, if, for example, the internet between the banks and all their ATMs was to be disconnected, the banks would have to have another way 
of connecting their ATMs with their central processing unit so the ATMs would function. That mean by having an alternate um, phone line connection or by having two internet providers. One is a local and one is an overseas provider. So they would need to have all of this in place. But if they waited until there was a hurricane in the country and all the lines were disconnected and people could not use an ATM for one week because it took one week to fix the lines, then that bank would not be able to do business. Money would not come in, money would not go out. Does everybody understand that? Can you wave your hands, please? Wave your hands. Good, excellent, thank you. So what sort of plans should businesses come up with in order to be prepared? They need to come up with business continuity plans. They need to come up with disaster recovery plans. They need to come up with a roadmap for continuity of operation, which is called a CWOP plan. They need to have emergency operations manuals. They need to have a crisis management manual and they need to have a team of experts to deal with incident responses. For example, if there is an airline flying and there is a crash of one of its aircraft, that airline has what's called an incident response team. It's a team of engineers, captains, doctors, and other experts who go to where the plane crashed and they are put on the ground to deal and manage that crash and make sure they recover the black box and start looking for survivors. Let's look at a hospital, a hospital. If a hospital in the Philippines or in India or in China and Australia actually one day suffered electrical failure because the electricity in that country got cut off due to a hurricane, how can that hospital look after people on respirators? How can that hospital treat people if it doesn't have power generation facilities and a power station built specially for the hospital for emergencies? If that hospital doesn't have an extra reserve of medical supplies, oxygen and blood in its blood bank, people will die. All of these are part of its immune, um, emergency operation plan. They're all part of its crisis management. So they say, if forever, we face a situation where there's no electricity and we have to switch on the electrical generators and they fail. This is how we're gonna treat patients. All of this is mandatory because if they don't have this, patients will die. So they need to look at the four R's. One, they need to know how to respond, how to restore, how to resume, and how to recover, okay? Does everybody understand that? So for example, if the hospital has no power, they must restore power by switching on the emergency generators. They must respond by making sure that all the um, resuscitation and machinery is active again, and that all patients that are on resuscitators or all the equipment in the operating theaters is working. They must resume doing surgeries and treating people as normal. And then they must work towards recovering the main power so that they don't have to spend extra money running their own separate power station. They must also make sure they have enough fuel to run their power station until such time as the main power line comes back. So remember, First is restore, second is respond, then it's resume, and then it's to work towards total recovery. Now, if you don't have a plan in place, it will be very hard to get total recovery because of the losses you've made. Okay, let's now reiterate. Business continuity management means ensuring the continuity or uninterrupted making of money. So you need to be able to ensure that your business can continue. 
you can continue to generate revenue, you can continue to manufacture your goods or provide the service. Let me ask you a question. If a hospital cannot get doctors to the hospital because there was a volcano and doctors can't come to work, can a hospital survive without doctors? No. So what do you think hospitals need to have in place to cater for an episode where there's a volcano or earthquake and their doctors cannot travel home and back every day? What sort of emergency plan would a hospital have to have in place? Who can tell me? Let's start with, um, who have I got here? Let's start with uh, Samir. Samir Darwish. Good afternoon, sir. How are you today? Open your microphone, Samir. It's good to see you again, sir. Are you there, Samir? Hello. Hi, Samir. Hello, Samir. Hi, Samir. Hi. My, my hypothesis or my question to you is, you're the director of medical services at a hospital. And you know that in your country, it's likely that there may be a volcano or an earthquake. And today, you hear that the country's on volcano alert or earthquake alert. And you have 50 doctors already in the hospital. What plans would you have to put in place to make sure that they don't go home and cannot come back? Because without doctors, your hospital cannot function. Would you agree with me? Yes. All right. So totally. what, what sort of plans do you think the hospital needs? So I guess uh, something like uh, internal residence for... Good. Uh, Good. For Excellent. emergency. Right. And uh, in, oh. they would have to have that internal residential apartment or units already planned out. They would have to make it a condition of employment that when there's an alert for a volcano or earthquake, they would make sure that as many doctors as possible move into the internal residence. Is that right? Yes. That's All right. And what else would they have to make sure of, Darwish? Would they have to make sure that they have the right doctors for all specialization? So would they have to make sure they have cardiology, neurology, ophthalmology, oncology? Would they have to make sure or do they just have one doctor? What would they have to do? Uh, they can make like uh, uh, a plan uh, for each, uh, uh, I think for each uh, department. Very okay. good. So they would At have least to. one doctor of this department each time and it's uh, like a very cycle. Good. Very like good. That. Thank you, Darwish. That was a perfect answer. And you think, Darwish, they would also need to apply that to their nursing staff? Uh, sure. Okay, good. Sure. And you think they would need to apply that to their surgical teams, the people that run the operating theaters? Uh, I think uh, they can plan that for every uh, necessary thing. Very good. Also and for it, equipment, also and it, for, uh, for goods, for, yeah, I don't know. Absolutely. It also has to, yeah, it also like has to be, or that's whatever. right, exactly right. Bed sheets, food, catering, they have to do it for everything. Would you agree with me? Yes, that's it. Thank you, Darwish. Thank you for your input. Very positive. Thank you, Darwish. Okay, let's move on. Let's talk to someone else. So Darwish has given you examples of what a hospital would have to do. Does everybody understand that? Everybody understand what Darwish said? I want everybody to wave their hands now. Go, everybody, wave your hands. Stop sitting there like monuments. Wave your hands. Very good. Xiong Lao, why can't I see your hand, young man? Wave your hands, Xiong Lao. You're here to learn, not to go to sleep. Very good. Thank you. Rosalind, wave your hand. Rosalind Campo. Good. Excellent. Okay, let's go back to our PowerPoint presentation. Okay, so business continuity management is an ongoing process with several different but complementary elements, as Mr. Darwish just explained to us. For example, a hospital. Planning for business continuity is a comprehensive process, and that includes disaster recovery, business recovery, business resumption, and contingency planning. Let's look at how those work. Everyone, I want you to make, take a picture. It includes disaster recovery, business recovery, business resumption, 
contingency planning. And now let's look at the process. Let's look at it. So business continuity planning, disaster recovery, business recovery, business resumption, contingency planning. Let's look at the objective. All right. Here, the objective was to have critical computer apps working. All right. And the focus was to recover the data because they lost all their data. Okay. This could be because of a mainframe severe failure or one of their servers uh, completely lost power. Or it could be because somebody broke into their server and stole all the information. So what is the solution? They would have to make sure that they have backups in other parts of the world that they can access at seconds notice. As you know, your government, your banks have their information protected, not only on one server, but by most international standard, your local bank must protect their information on at least three servers in three different countries. If they are a world prime bank, an international bank, they would usually protect their data on a server in their own country, another server in Europe, and maybe another server in Asia, Australasia, or the United States. Why do they protect their information in different parts of the world? To make sure that if there's a war in Asia, they still have secure servers in Europe. If there's a war in Europe, in Russia, they still have services in America or in Southeast Asia that they can retrieve from. So they would need to plan to have alternate secure servers that are updated daily or by the minute, live updates happening in three different areas of the world. Let's look at the next one, business recovery. Um, Mr. Govan, you are putting lines on my screen, sir. Could you remove the lines immediately, please? Okay, so business recovery talks about critical business processes. So if you have a critical business process, for example, you're a car manufacturing plant, again, lines on my screen. Critical business process, if you have a car manufacturing plant and the robots in your car manufacturing plant failed, they started assembling the car in the wrong way. You would need to have a recovery plan on how to fix that immediately, get the process back on track. Because if the process doesn't get on track, back on track, you will not be able to manufacture. And at the end of the day, you will not be able to deliver goods. For example, use a laboratory. Hospitals need to send blood to a laboratory to be analyzed so doctors can treat patients. If that laboratory is flooded and they can't do analysis on blood or urine samples, doctors can't make medical decisions on how to treat patients. So what do they need to do? The hospital may have to have a emergency laboratory in another part of the building so that if one laboratory is infected um, by disease, bacteria or flood, they can lock that laboratory and start using another laboratory. You will find that most hospitals or medical facilities have at least three different laboratories in different buildings and different parts of the hospital for that purpose. Let's talk about business resumption. Now, remember we said that if you are an airline and COVID-19 had struck, and as I said to you, Singapore Airlines had planted all its aircraft in deserts all over the world. Can you tell me, do you think they can just switch those airplanes on and return to normal service? Do you think restoring normal business is simple? Who can tell me? What do you think? Who can tell me? Who can answer that? Anybody can tell me what is involved if an airline switches off the engines of an aircraft? Does anybody understand how difficult it is to switch it on again? Anyone? Let's talk to Anasur Rahman. Hello, Anasur. 
Good evening, sir. Welcome. Good to see you again. Where are you today? Hello, Hello Anasur. Good. How are you? Hi, good afternoon. An Anasur, I'm going to ask you, Singapore Airlines has 200 aircraft. During COVID-19, 70 of those aircraft were parked in the deserts of Australia, okay? After a year and a half or two years, the airline industry started opening the doors. Can you tell me, what do you think would be involved in the process of making those aircraft fly again? Do you know? Yes, first thing, uh, you see, you see the aircraft if stop whole 70 numbers of the aircraft Australia parked out. They yes. will need to give they will need to give the rent cost for the park. Second right. thing, the air, aircraft uh, have to uh, need to services when they open again. Yes. They need to actually and, send engineering staff to switch yes. on the aircraft, warm up the engines, test yes. all their functions, yes. do complete overhaul checks before yes. they even fly the aircraft. Am I right? Yes, and also need to all the staff need to continuously salary so they will no have income. So how they will pay? So they will need to recovery plan. Thank you. Exactly right. So if they don't have a recovery plan in place, this may become a very expensive exercise. Would you agree? Yes. Yes, and if, I agree that. And if they don't have enough engineers to go to Australia to check seventy. Um, A380s and get them back into service, they may have to look for planes to rent from another company, which would cost them more money. Am I right? Yes. yes. Thank you very no, much. Yes. Thank yeah, you. Good, good. Excellent. Do you have any other you want to add? Go ahead. I didn't cut you off. Is there anything else you think <laughs> that they need to do? A lot of things have involved because if we, we, if we have evaluate all those things, then you have a lot of things come out. So we Thank have uh, that uh, uh, like uh, all those control, uh, five, uh, hierarchy of control, if you're measuring all those things, so we can come out with a lot of things. Very good. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Yes, Thank, Thank you. you. On the right track. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. You're welcome, sir. Let's talk to someone else. Let's talk to Mary Lou. Mary Lou Espanola. Good evening, ma'am. How are you today? Hello, Mary Lou. Are you there? Can you open your microphone? You want to open your microphone and talk to me, Mary Lou? Okay. Mary Lou can't hear me for some reason. Hi, Mary Lou. How are you today? I'm good. Good. So Mary Lou, tell me. Work. Good. Sir, sir, Let I me need ask. My work. All right. What's what sort of work do you do? What what sort of company do you work in? I'm working in logistics, so I'm in my office. Okay, so... let me ask you a quick question, Mary Lou. If you had a disaster and you needed to recover from that disaster to operate logistics again, do you think it's important to have a plan? Yes, sir. All the, all the process with the plan. Good. Excellent. Thank you, Mary Lou. Good yes, on you. Sir. Keep focusing. Thank you very much. All right. Are, let's go. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. So let's take it to a more simple example. Genevieve Murada, you look like you're falling to sleep. I need to wake you up. Hello, Genevieve. Where are you? Wake up, Genevieve. Hello, Genevieve. Hello, sir. Genevieve, if you ran a restaurant, you ran a restaurant, okay? And your restaurant was famous for cooking the best food in your country. But because of COVID-19, there was no business. You closed your restaurant, okay? All the fridges okay. were empty, no stock, nothing. And then after COVID-19, you want to reopen your restaurant. Do you think you could just do that in one day? Or you think you need to have a schedule and a plan before you could reopen? I need a plan for all the needs of uh, for the opening of the restaurant if so, you can just do it for one day. Yeah, so you would have to source the raw material. The kitchen staff yes. would have to prepare everything. Yes. You would have to test yes. all the equipment. You would have to clean the restaurant and yes. make sure it looks good before you open. Yes. Is that right? Yeah, that's right. And do you think a business continuity management plan would help you do that quicker? Yes. Good. Excellent. Thank you very much. Thank Good you. work. I'll talk to you soon. Let's go back to our PowerPoint presentation. So as I said to you, building process restoration or business resumption, as one of my uh, good students just explained about the airline, 
let me explain that every time an aircraft engine is switched off, usually when an aircraft lands, they put the engine in idle state. That means the engine is not powered off. They switch it to idle where there's still electricity in it, but it's not turning. The propellers are not spinning. Now, the minute they disconnect all the power completely and do not keep it warm and it goes cold, they would need to actually go through a complete engineering check to make sure those engines are safe to restart. Because if they go cold and they start them suddenly, the engine might experience damage. It might even set itself on fire or blow up. A Rolls-Royce engine on an A380 can cost as much as maybe two or three hundred million dollars. All right. So depending on the technology, if you look at an A380 that has four engines, you're talking somewhere between three hundred and four hundred million dollars. Each engine can run one hundred million dollars. OK, so depending on the engine and its size, that's how expensive those engines can become. So as we just discussed, if the aircraft is switched off and remains parked for a week or two weeks or three weeks or two years, the cost of putting that back into service is not just getting a pilot to switch on the engine again. And unless the airlines have a business resumption plan in place, they would simply not be able to get their planes back in the air quick enough and they would lose money. And the last one is what we call contingency planning. The airline must have an alternative plan. For example, COVID-19, 70 aircraft are uh, parked overseas, but they know that it's going to take them six months to bring those aircraft back. So they have to have a contingency plan. They have to have a plan with another company to say that if I need aircraft, I can rent them from you within two days or three days notice. That's called a contingency plan. All right. So the contingency plan would allow the airline to continue operating whilst they got their own aircraft back into service. For example, the bank, if the bank found out that they couldn't connect all their ATMs to the computer because there was no electricity, no fiber optic, no telephone lines. The only other way for them to provide the availability of deposit and withdrawing cash to their customers, it's to open the branches longer hours, make the bank staff work longer hours, or maybe have mobile banks set up on the back of vans or trucks that drive around and park outside the ATM to give people cash. Because remember, the whole ATM network is broken. So the bank would have to have contingency plans and manual processes so they could continue their business. Does everybody understand what I've explained? Could you wave your hands, please? Wave your hands now. Good, excellent. All right. Can everybody take a photo of this so you remember what it says? Take a photo, please. Everyone, I want to see your phone screenshot. Good, excellent. Let's go on. Okay, let's look at business continuity management as far as risk management and security is concerned. Risk management means security. It means having insurance. It means being able to protect important records, patient records or business records. It means being able to reduce the impact on the business. All right, so let's look at it. Crisis management plan would mean, what are you gonna do if this happens? How are you gonna protect your product and services from contamination or from people stealing your data or from people kidnapping your technology or from your staff refusing to work and going on strike. The emergency operations plan would have to talk about data recovery, maybe having it actually backed up in another part of the world. You would have to have another plan on alternative computer systems or maybe a manual process 
because you need time to recover your data and switch on your machines and computers again. And you would need to have a special team, specially trained to make sure that all this happens. So that if Abigail's factory that makes cars, all the technology and the robots fail, she would have to have a team of managers that would know how to teach all the people on the assembly line to do the process manually without the robots. If Abigail's factory doesn't have a team trained to actually put in place an emergency operations plan, Abigail's factory would stop. She would lose money because no cars are being manufactured. All of this is part of risk management. Does everybody understand what I mean by risk management? Wave your hands, please. Wave your hands. All right, let's talk about what are the benefits of business continuity management. Who can tell me what are some of the benefits of business continuity management? Can you wave your hand if you know one of the benefits? What are one of the benefits? Let's talk to Muhammad Abu Hassan. Muhammad Abu Hassan, how are you today? Switch on your microphone. I'm good, sir. I'm good. Tell me, what are one of the benefits of having a business continuity management plan, data recovery, and disaster recovery plan in place? Sorry, sir. Will, will you please repeat the question again? All right. What are the benefits or one benefit for a company to have a business continuity management plan in place? Uh, so actually, uh, if you if you discontinue your business or uh, if you don't have any continuation plan, for, uh, how uh, future business or future goal be will be achieved? Great, but what what do you think? One of the biggest benefits are they protect their reputation, right? Because if they don't have business continuity plans and they can't come back to normal business, they will lose their customers. Would you agree with me? Would that be yes. one of the biggest customers benefits? Customers and uh, more or less the, the employee are working in that company. There, there'll be in a big trouble also, no? and their brand will be dis dissolved from the market as well as their Absolute. reputation, their customer. Absolutely, good, good answer. Thank you very much. Thank you. I'll talk to you again. Okay, can anybody else give me another benefit? Another benefit. Um, let's talk to. Uh, who am I talking to? Let's talk to On Gwyn. Ong Gwyn Allah, can you give me one of the benefits of having a business continuity plan? Can you unmute your microphone, Allah? Hi, yes. Allah, how are you? Yes, hello, I'm fine. So, Allah, one of our other students just said that the reputation of the company is one benefit because if they have business continuity, they would save the reputation of their company. Can you give me another benefit? Uh, yes, if you uh, have no business or continuous uh, continuity plans for your business or uh, yep. for disaster so you uh, so your company will be get a big loss in like uh, um in market and in a uh, uh, customer and even that uh, um, the you will be cannot keep um, uh, the business continue right and you would have to fire all your staff and they wouldn't have an income and your staff and their families would suffer is that right? Yes. yes. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much. That's a great, great answer. Thank you very much. I think you both have given me the two most important ones. Thank you. I'll come back to you. Let's go back and now look at a list of benefits because there's more than two benefits. Okay. So the main reason to implement business continuity management is to ensure that the business can continue to operate and continue to generate revenue and pay salaries to the people who depend on it for their livelihood and to buy food for their families. However, there are other reasons also that companies need to adopt the system. And these reasons include one, protect your organization's reputation. The public will be impressed if you can assure them that you can deal with an emergency. If you are a bank and all the power gets disconnected, all the internet gets disconnected and people can't go to the bank. If you provide them a mobile banking service, 
that would protect your reputation and customers will have more confidence in doing business with you. Remember, protect your organization's reputation. Your consumer, the public, will feel better and more confident to do business with you if you can actually resolve issues quickly and efficiently after a power cable disconnection, after an earthquake, after COVID-19, or whatever the disaster may be. Reason number two, if you can show the people that work for you that no matter what happens, you have a plan in place so they can actually continue running the business and there is no danger of them losing their job because you have other ways of generating revenue. Staff will be motivated and they will work harder. Number three, you build your relation with third parties and subsidiaries. For example, Abigail, you own a restaurant and your restaurant is famous for selling pork adobo. And the farmer or the supplier that sells you pork always provides you the best pork every week. Usually you buy five, 600 kilos of pork a week. Now, if you have a disaster like COVID and you close your restaurant and cannot continue operating and sending food out to people through food delivery, and you say to your pork supplier, I'm sorry, I cannot buy from you for six months. The chances are that when you open your restaurant again, that supplier will say, sorry, Abigail, I can't supply you anymore. The meat that you used to buy I sold to another restaurant, or he will say that the price has gone up. And if you, if he increases the price on you, Abigail, that means you're going to increase the price on your customers. So remember, by having business continuity plans in place, if you're a restaurant, you can still open and send food to your customers via delivery or takeaway because they can't eat in the restaurant. And that means that you can still buy supplies off your suppliers. It may not be the large quantity, but you will also support their business so they can stay open. By having business continuity plans for your own staff, for your own customers, and also for the people that you work with your suppliers or your distributors or your people that actually sell your products, it will actually prepare you to solidify your relationship and it will stop you from breaking that relationship or losing that relationship because you didn't have any plans to keep the business running through this disaster of any kind. Can you imagine what would have happened if people couldn't buy goods and services online? Can you imagine if Amazon could not deliver the goods within two or three days? Say Amazon said, I can only deliver after three months. Amazon would have gone out of business. Amazon's business grew nearly 20 fold because during COVID-19, it offered its customers delivery for groceries within one day, same day in most countries, for other goods within two to three days, depending on the goods. Amazon opened warehouses in some 20 countries and made sure that they got enough stock off their suppliers and they put them in the warehouses. So if today Anchona ordered a skirt from um, Amazon in her country, Amazon had her skirt in their warehouse in her country. They could deliver it the next day because Amazon did a, uh, the right thing by planning ahead and saying to the supplier, we have 2,000 women in our country that buy your skirts. How about you give us a supply of skirts? We'll send those to all our warehouses in all the countries we work with. And when we sell that skirt, we'll pay you. But 
to save you losing customers by telling customers that it will take three months or three weeks to get your skirt because of COVID-19. We will still be able to deliver your skirt the next day because we have stock in all our warehouses, 20 plus warehouses around the world. Now that only happened because Amazon had the business continuity plan to make sure that all its most popular goods were available in all its warehouses around the world so that their customers didn't suffer. Now, for the supplier, that was good because the supplier could still sell his stock. But if Amazon didn't do that, the supplier would have the stock sitting in their warehouse. And by the time COVID-19 was over, all that stock would be out of fashion. Does everybody understand what I mean? Could you all wave your hands if you understand? Good, okay, good, excellent. All right, good. Um, let me ask, hey, Gwyn Min. Hello, hey, Gwyn. Can you open your microphone? Hi, hey, Gwyn, open your microphone. Yeah. Yes, hey, sir. Gwyn, do you understand what I just explained about I, Amazon? Uh, yes, sir, I understand right. it. So. Can you explain to me what I just explained? So Amazon had its warehouses all over the world. In order for them to protect their customer and their supplier, what did Amazon do? Uh, in my opinion, I think they should keep their business and uh, if the total amount is not can match with their target, they can reduce the target. Exactly down. right. Exactly right. And that's what they did. So what they did is they went to their suppliers, for example, Levi's, and said, we will take your stock. Instead of taking it from your warehouse, we will send it to all our warehouses all over the world. So when the customer buys, we can deliver the next day. We don't have to wait for it to come from America. Do you understand what I mean by that? Uh, yes, sir. Thank you very much. Do you think that helped? Do you think that helped? Um, Amazon's reputation? Do you think that helped the supplier's reputation? Do you think that helped the relationship between Amazon and its supplier? Yes, I think it's very important because I'd like, uh, for my uh, example, I, yes. have, I work in the, the same situation that my customer, because of COVID-19, he didn't get my orders and yes, my supply chains, it totally stuck and it's effect until now. So All right, so can I ask you, what plans are you making to make sure that happens again? Are you planning to make sure that you keep stock in your own warehouse? Are you starting to come up with plans for the future to avoid this? Uh, yes, sure. We will plan, yes, we will uh, estimate your orders in the future. For each All right, customer. so I hope, I hope this lesson helps you and I hope you're learning from this. Take Amazon. Amazon did it very quickly. As soon as COVID started, they went to all their suppliers. They said, give us your stock. We'll send it to all our warehouses around the world. The supplier was happy because the stock was moving. All right. And they said to the supplier, we will not pay for all of it now. We will pay for it as it's sold out of our warehouse. Of course, the supplier said yes, because if they did it, the stock would remain in their warehouse. And after COVID was finished, all that stock would be out of date, out of fashion, and they would have to throw it out. Do you understand what I mean? Yes, but unfortunately, my customer didn't do that. So yeah. Good. Stock. excellent. <laughs> there you go. So today's lesson is helping you, is it? Yes, it is. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Okay, let's go on with the lesson. Thank you, sir. Okay, let's go on. So. Let's go on and look at another one, another reason why business continuity management is important. To help meet regulatory requirements, a growing body of legislation requires businesses in areas such as hospitals, medical provisions, food, electricity, medication, medicine, all these sorts of businesses are required by international standard ISO to have business continuity management plans in place. Can you imagine what would happen if a hospital didn't have BCM in place? Patients would die because the hospital were negligent. Globally, corporate governance and regulations, corporate regulations, directors can be held personally liable if they don't have 
business continuity management place plans in place. If they haven't developed a team who can put in place business continuity plans, if they don't employ skilled people and train them to be there to deal with these disasters, the directors of the company could be held liable. Can you imagine if I was in hospital and all the electricity in the hospital got disconnected and I'm on a heart machine, I'm on a resuscitator. And when the electricity dies, the hospital doesn't have any electricity backup. And after a few hours, the machine has no more charge. The batteries are dead. As a result, I die. Who do you think would be criminally negligent? The hospital directors, as well as the hospital administrators. Do you all understand that? Yes or no? Wave your hands. Do you understand that, Anchona? Do you understand that, Leticia? Do you understand that, Glenn Dexter? Wave your hand. Do you understand that, Samir? Good, excellent. Ladies and gentlemen, today, in today, 2022, the 20th century, we suffer more threats of cyber attacks than any other generation in the world. Okay? People and cyber crime is happening every day, whether it's through crypto currencies, as recently crypto banks got um, hijacked by cyber threat and millions of dollars were stolen. Cyber attacks are something that are a primary cause of business disruption and disaster. This is one of the most common causes other than a volcano, an earthquake, or COVID-19. Let me ask you a question. There's a famous saying, if you can't describe what you are doing as a process, you don't know what you are doing. So if the business does not understand its process and does not know how to actually fix that process in the event of power failure, in the event of a cyber threat, in the event of an earthquake, what that tells the customer is that business has no idea of what it's doing. If a hospital doesn't have backup generators to run operations and heart respirators or um, blood circulation or blood transplant machines, and they don't have a process to do it manually, people will die. And that would say that the hospital are incompetent and negligent. Let's talk about what is involved in business continuity planning. I want everybody to write this down. Now, take a picture, write it down. Don't sit there like monuments. Number one, pre-planning. Project initiation and management doing risk evaluation and doing business impact analysis. That's part of the initial process. Then comes planning, documenting the strategies that you're gonna use, making sure you have an emergency response and operations team and policy and process on paper. Make sure that the plan development and implementation are trained communicated to all the managers and staff so they know what to do. Do not wait until the disaster happens. Make sure everybody's aware. Make sure that after you've developed your business continuity plan, after you've developed the plan, after you've documented it, make sure you educate your team. Make sure you continuously remind them and do practice so they know what would happen if you need to use these emergency plans and make sure that you continuously review your business continuity plans and upgrade them. So one day, if your computer server dies, you go to your business continuity manual and it refers to the server that you owned 10 years ago. If you upgrade your computer server, your business continuity plan, your IT plan has to be upgraded. You have to know how to deal with the new equipment. 
So ongoing training, ongoing exercises, ongoing plans. Does everybody understand what I mean? Can you wave your hands, please? Wave your hands. Let's look at a typical business continuity management process. Number one, the company decides to start a BCP project initiation. They develop the scope and the policy they want. This is usually done by the board or the owners of the company. They actually engage a team of managers to start what they call business impact analysis. All right. They then start identify the risks and develop recovery strategies. Now, remember, for one, two, three, and four to happen, first, they need to make sure that in the company, they have enough managers to actually be involved in the process. So when you want to initiate a BCP project, you need to ask yourself, which of my managers am, are going to be part of the team? How many managers do I need? Then you need to call them and ask them to start developing a scope and a policy. To do that, they need to identify the risks that you're going to face if you have a disaster. They need to actually develop recovery strategies. Once they've developed them, they need to test them. Then they need to report back to management to have them approved. They need to review them on an ongoing basis. They need to test them and they need to train everybody and make sure they do it regularly. And they also need to make sure that they review the BCP plan on a quarterly, half yearly, annual basis to make sure it's up to date with the technology and the threats that the world is facing. Does everybody understand that? Yes or no? Wave your hands. Good, excellent, thank you. Everybody, would you like to take a photo of this plan so you can learn from it? Everybody, take a photo. Hold on. Okay, has everybody taken a photo? Excellent. So what are the critical success factors of a business continuity plan? Number one, you need to make sure that you have a team of managers or subject experts that can make sure that they actually develop the right business continuity plan and implement it. You need to make sure that the team you have doing this are a team that are motivated and really understand your business and put themselves in the shoes of the business. They care about the business. You need a team that is not going to tell you lies and tell you that they know what they, they are doing or they have a plan. They need to be brutally honest and transparent. You need to make sure that you have a team on your staff in-house that you have given the time and have the expertise to actually develop a business continuity plan. If you don't have staff that know what to do. You need to get them help by having an, an expert consultant such as myself or an expert academic or consultant that deals in business continuity planning, come in and guide your team on how to go through and develop a business continuity plan. You need to make sure that they simplify the steps to make sure they keep it simple but deal with all the critical functions. That is, take into account the people, the machines, the facilities, the weather, the economy, the technology, and everything else that comes with it. Does everybody understand that? So if I say the economy, if I say the weather, if I say um, natural, natural resources, all of these come under miscellaneous. Remember, ladies and gentlemen, for business continuity planning to be effective, you must expect the worst. Don't be disappointed to find out about the truth and the failures in your organization to be prepared. 
make sure you plan for business continuity and make sure you take it seriously and don't allow disasters to go unplanned, especially in countries like Manila, the Philippines, Vietnam, um, Bhutan, Australia, where we suffer from droughts, the United Arab Emirates, where they have sandstorms, all over the world, in Russia, where there's a war, because one president has this idea that he wants to take over another country for no justified reason. But now that country's fighting back. So remember, if you don't accept the worst, if you're too afraid to face reality, then one day your business will be out of business. You will not be able to succeed. I would like to answer any questions. Does anyone have questions? I want to hear questions. I want at least 20 questions. If you want to ask a question, please raise your hand electronically and I will open your microphone. Go ahead. Come on, I want to see hands. Okay, first question. Inek, Supa, Inek Supami. Hello, Inek Supami. Where are you? Open your microphone, Inik. Hi, Inik. What's your question? Are you there, Inik? Hold on. I've lost Inik. Where is she gone? Are you there, Inik? Unmute your microphone. Inik Supami, can you unmute your microphone, please? Hi, yes. Anik. What's your uh, question? Hello, hello sir. Yes. Uh, my planning for the next future, I'm going to open a, a carpenter business. How to make the money rolling? Sorry, what sort of business? Uh, carpenter, carpenter, sir. Uh, carpentry business, wood yes. carpentry. Yes. Right. So what are you asking me? How to keep the money coming? How to generate revenue? Yes, uh, because... it. Assign COVID-19, my business so drop, totally drop. So we need to uh, build the money, can grow. Uh, okay, all right. Let uh, me ask uh, you, what, okay, yes. why did your business drop? Is that because you could not work without electricity? You didn't have tradesmen? You couldn't get supplies or you couldn't deliver to customers? What was the reason? Yes, the, the, market, the, market, sorry, the market problem. Okay, so what you need to do now is you basically need to do what we call a analysis of your marketing strategy. You need to look at what your SWOT is. What are your strengths? What are your weaknesses? What are the opportunities? What are the threats you face in the market? And you need to put those on paper. You need to read about SWOT. It's called SWOT. If you do a SWOT analysis of your business, and drop me an email, I would be happy to call you and give you some guidance on how to fix it. But before I do that, I need to understand what sort of carpentry you're in, and you need to tell me about your business. So if you look at your business before COVID-19, what were your strengths? Why was your business popular with its customers? All right? Yes, and yes, yes. during COVID-19, or before COVID-19, did you have any weaknesses? Was there anything that you were not good at? All right? Yes, yes. Okay. Since COVID-19, what opportunities have taken away your customers? And what opportunities is there for you to get your customers back? Yes. Right? Even, and, yes. and then what are the threats you're facing now? Is it because of more expensive material? Is it because you need to contact your customers again? Or is it because there's too many carpentry businesses? Oh, because in my, uh, my place, so many uh, people doing this, sir. All right. So then, the market is uh, then, up and okay. down, up and down. Then you need to do a SWOT analysis. Can you write this down? I will put it in the chat box, Mr. Govan. Can you write down SWOT analysis in the chat box? Actually, I've done it, Govan. It's okay. SWAT. Okay, I have sent you a message saying SWAT analysis. What I suggest you do is you go to Google tonight and you learn about SWAT analysis. Okay. If you have any questions about it, my uh, 
colleague here, Mr. Govan. Mr. Govan, can you send this student my mobile number through Zoom uh, chat, please? Send my WhatsApp mobile to this student now, Govan. If you have any questions about it, you can always drop me a message on WhatsApp and I'll be able to help you. Um, I'm not sure if you had attended a previous lesson I did on SWOT analysis, but in the meantime, you can look at it online. If you're studying with us, you'll learn about it during your marketing class anyway, um, during your diploma or postgraduate diploma degree. And all of you here are studying with us. So if you haven't learned it already, you will learn about it. But in the meantime, I encourage you to read about SWOT. And if you don't understand it, message me, I would be happy to help you. Would that help you? Happy. Good. Excellent. It's my pleasure. That's why you should continue studying. Thank you very much. Who Thank else you, would sir. like to talk to me? Can somebody else wave their hand or put up their hand? Come on, don't tell me you all know this. None of you are professors yet. You all need to learn. Don't be shy. Okay, very good. Um, Sushi, uh, sorry, Suki Preseta, where are you? Hold on. I've lost you. Just bear with me for a minute. Give me a moment, Suki. I have to find you, ma'am. Hi, Suki. Can you unmute your microphone? Oh, I already... Okay, go ahead. How can I help you, Suki? Do you can hear me? Yes, I can. Go ahead. Um, all right. So how do you measure about the, this the business continuity? How do you measure its success or how do you measure its implementation? Uh, maybe both of them. All right. Okay. First, you would have to develop the plan, the business continuity plan. Once you developed it, how would you measure whether it's successful? By making sure that you test it regularly within your company. Do you understand what I mean? So, so every... how, how, how are you going to test it? And how often you can test off? Well, you need to test it every quarter. So if you're a manufacturing ad plant and you have a... BCP in the event that power got cut off or in the event that one of your suppliers went bankrupt and couldn't supply you, you would have to make sure that you have an alternate plan. So one day you would wake up and say to the factory, there is no electricity. You switch off the electricity from the main power. You make them switch on all the emergency generators. You make them go and look for the spare parts from another supplier. You make them go through a practice of implementing the same situation that they would do during a disaster. Now, you as management would have to plan when that's going to happen. Do you understand what I mean by that, Suki? Mm -hmm. I All do right. understand. Thank you. So what you need okay. to do, Suki, no, hold on. I don't want you just to say you understand because I don't yeah. think you do. Listen carefully. What you do, Suki, once you develop a business continuity plan on paper, all right, hear me, then what I want you to do is come up with a checklist to say every three months, this is what we're going to do to test this plan. Do you understand me, Suki? Okay. And once you've done that, you drop me an email with your business continuity plan and with your checklist. And I will go through it, it, give me a day or two, and I will come back and tell you whether your quarterly test or a trial or practice is sufficient for you to continue. Would that help you? Yeah, thank you. You're welcome. Uh, Mr. Govan, send my work email to Ms. Suki by... Um, Zoom chat, please. Thank you. All right. Mm -hmm. Let me make it easier. Mr. Govan, please put my email in the Zoom chat for all students. But please, if you email me in the actual subject line, put business continuity management, biz talk, and give me at least seven to 10 days to answer. But I will answer each and every one of you without fail. I repeat, Mr. Govan, type in the chat box my email address and subject BCM BizTalk54. They must put that in the subject for me to answer them. Mr. Govind? The subject should be BCM dash BizTalk54. Can you type that in the chat box, Mr. Govind?
So, okay, Govan, I'm doing it. Okay, did everybody get the subject? Yes, sir. Very good. Thank you. You did it too as well, Govan. Thank you so much, mate. You're a star. Thank you, Govan. All right. Does everybody understand what I said? Understand, sir. Yes or no? Wave your hands. Yes. Come on. I want to see you get excited. You're learning. Get excited. Good. Excellent. All right. Okay. All right. I want you to remember this, ladies and gentlemen, that business is not magic. Business is science. To run a business, you need to forget your emotions and focus on facts. Do you understand that, everyone? Forget your emotions, focus on facts. All right, let's answer some people's questions. I have a question from Jenilyn Benganillo. Ben Hello, Jenilyn. Hi, how are you, Jenilyn? Open your microphone, please, quickly. Are you there, Jenilyn? Hello, sir. Yes, sir. Are um, you there, Jenilyn? Yes, okay, yes, next. sir. Um, Mary Ann Burdan, can you open your microphone, please? Hi, Mary Ann. How can I help you today? Hi. Hello. Good morning, sir. Hi, I'm fine. Are you fine. there, Mary Ann? Uh, yes. You Talk hear me, me sir? Mary Ann. Yeah, Switch okay. on your microphone. Yeah, I did. Okay. Next, Rosalind. Can okay. you unmute your microphone, Rosalind? Hi, Rosalind. Hello. Hello. Sir. Good, good evening. Are you there, Rosalind? How are you? Uh, sir, can you up, give us can you give us more strategies on a uh, business con continuity? I think uh, for those girls that I tried to connect, I can't hear you. Please fix your microphone and raise your hand again. I'll come back to you, Rosalind more strategies what i suggest you do rosalind is you need to go through the material i've talked to you about today you need to practice developing your own bcm okay if you believe that it would help for me to give you a copy of the powerpoint today drop me an email and say please share powerpoint and i will send it to you by email all right but i will only send you the powerpoint if you're going to actually use it. Please do not ask me for PowerPoint and then just go and save it and not use it. If you think you're going to learn and you're going to put BCP into practice, send me an email and by Monday or Tuesday, I will send you PDF copy of today's presentation. But Rosalind, what I encourage you to do is to try and develop your own BCP and I'm happy to help you with it but you need to make an effort. Do you understand that, Rosalind? Because every company has a different business and has different strategies. So until I understand what business you're in, I can't give you more specific strategies. Do you understand me, Rosalind? Yes, sir, I get it. Does that help you, Rosalind? Yeah, more, more, more. Okay, have you received my email address in the chat box? I actually save it, sir. Thank you very much. Okay, let's talk to someone else. Who would like to talk to me next? Girls, if I couldn't hear you, please up your hand again. Letitia, are you there this time, Letitia? Unmute your microphone. Are you there, Letitia? Unmute your microphone. Hi. Hi, Letitia. Hi, can, how can I help you? What's your question? Uh, can you give how to minimize potential impact of crisis. Again, Letitia, if you drop me an email, I will send you a copy of the PowerPoint and then you go through it. And once you develop your own answers, email me and tell me what sort of business you run and I would be happy to help you. Would that help you? Okay. Yes or no? Good on you, Letitia. Yeah. My email address is in the chat box, Letitia. Yeah, yes, yes. Thank you very much. Okay, let's go on. Who's next? I have, um, you need to switch on your camera if you want to talk to me. Okay, uh, uh, 
Jibichi, Jibichli Joyce. Are you there? Hello, Jibichli. Can you unmute your microphone? Hi, how can I help you? Hi, uh, my question today is, uh, for example, if you have like a small business, at what stage is it safe to introduce a new idea without injecting more capital? Well, you know, that is not business continuity management, that's business strategy. And um, I will deliver a lecture on that in the coming months. I delivered it a few months ago. But let me answer you anyway. Um, before you introduce any new product into your business uh, routine or business rostrum, you should first do a SWOT analysis. And by doing a SWOT analysis, what you're doing is asking yourself, what are your business strengths? What are your weaknesses? What opportunities is there in the market for you to introduce another product? Will this product complement your product range? And what are the threats you face by introducing this new product? So what I would suggest to you, um, Jebashil, is I just put in the chat box to everyone, SWOT analysis. I suggest you try to download information about SWOT analysis and try to do one. If you don't understand how to do it, drop me an email. I will send you information on a SWOT analysis. And I will also send you the PowerPoint that I shared today. And if you, if you bear with me for a moment, please, somebody's open their microphone. Just bear with me for a moment. OK, can you hear me now, Jebachil? Can you wave your hand? So once you've received that, Jebachil, read through it. And please keep an eye on, now that you're a student, in the coming months, I think next month sometime, I will be running a lesson on how to develop a business plan and a business strategy. You need to sit in that class, all right? And if you're studying with us, when you get to your marketing, strategic marketing or marketing management lesson or module, you will also learn about it but I will be doing it in BizTalk um, sometime next month. But please, Jebba Chill, drop me an email and I will send you some basic information about SWOT analysis. I will also send you a copy of today's PowerPoint. But I don't understand your product, Jebba Chill. So when you send me an email, tell me some basic information about what your product is and what your business is so I can help you. Is that okay with you, Jebba Chill? Okay, thank you, Jebba Chill. I'll talk to you soon. Okay, who's next? Who would like to talk to me? Um, let's go to uh, Je Juicito. Hello, Juicito. Can you unmute your microphone? Hi, Juicito. Unmute your microphone. Hello. Hi, how can Hi. I help you? Go yeah. ahead. So we know that the business continuity plan is uh, always uh, ready for the big company because they have resources right but what about for those small and medium enterprises that's where you're wrong jesuito if you are a business owner that thinks that bcm is only for multinationals you will fail my dear sir bcm is for every single business entity it is more important to a small business than it is to a big business and the reason for that is a big business has a longer lifeline they can survive a crisis. But for a small business, if you cannot react to a crisis immediately, you will die. Believe me, sir, if you have the idea or the mindset, which is what I call a farmer's mindset of 20 years ago, to say that only big companies have BCM, you need to actually change your thinking. That is a big mistake. If you are a small company with 10 employees, you need to have a BCM plan. If you're a medium enterprise with 50 employees, you need to have a BCM plan. If you are a small medium enterprise with 100 employees, you need to have a BCM plan. The only difference, uh, Jesuito, is which company or what size company can survive longer without BCM, all right? Of course, Singapore Airlines, is a billion dollar, multi-billion dollar company. If they don't have BCM and face a disaster, they have the money to pay for it a little bit longer. But for a small business, you will die overnight. Do you understand my explanation, sir? Yes, 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 I understand. But, but what I mean is that like the small businesses, 
because yeah. nobody is ready when the COVID struck the but world. That's, the pro that's why you need to have a BCM <laughs> plan. If so, you had a plan in place, you wouldn't have suffered. Okay, okay. All right, let me, let me answer your question. Okay, let, no, let, let's hypothetically, Jesuito, give me an example of the business you're talking about. What sort of business? Oh, okay, so uh, like here in Singapore, there are some laundry companies. Okay, okay. so All just right. because because okay. of the COVID struck, yeah. so they are not prepared for this. But okay. of course, right. those, those who are a big camp laundry company, yeah. they are able to... Okay, to I'm going to answer that uh, because I'm a customer. Before yeah. COVID-19, I used to go to a laundry and drop off my laundry or dry cleaning once a week. I used to spend $200 a week on laundry. After COVID-19, all the retail outlets and shopping malls were closed. I could not go back to that laundry company because that laundry company did not have an app or a website or even a driver that would come to my house, give me an empty laundry bag where I could put my laundry, fill in a form with my credit card number. He could take it back to the laundry factory, get it laundered and delivered back to my house. I had to search 30 laundry companies in Singapore to find one that had a pickup delivery service. So for two years during COVID, they got $150 a week off me for laundry. Why could I not go back to the normal laundry? Because the only business they had was the old lady behind the counter. They didn't have any continuity plan what would happen if all my shops at the shopping centers had to close? How can I still service my clients? Does that answer your question? Is yes, that yes, something? Yes, yes. All right. So are you a laundry operator? Are you a uh, laundry operator? Uh, yes, yes, yes. No, well, I'm the operation, uh, assistant operation manager. Well, that. you know, tell me, I'm a very... I'm a very loyal laundry dry cleaning customer. I send maybe 20 shirts and 30 t-shirts every week to a reliable laundry. If your laundry has a pickup drop-off service that's hassle-free, where you give me a laundry bag with your laundry's name on it, and every week I leave my laundry in the bag on my front door, at the end of the next day, you pick it up every day from my front door. The next day you return all my items, each item hanging in a sealed plastic bag and you hang it at my gate and deduct the cost of that service from my credit card without causing me headaches. I would love to give you my business. Do you know yes, how sir. many business we, customers, we, you know how many business customers are looking for that service but cannot find it in Singapore? We have, sir, we have apps because we are one of the biggest laundry company here in Singapore. Well, you know what? You've got my email address. My colleague yes, put yes. it in the chat box. You tell me about your brand because maybe it's a brand that I don't know, but I deal with a certain laundry company now and they had an app, but the app kept making mistakes. So I threatened to walk away. So now they have a paper system. And the other thing that most you laundry companies don't do is you don't provide me a laundry bag. So you know, when I stay in a hotel, Jesuito, the, the hotel provides me a laundry bag, right? And on that laundry bag, I put my laundry inside the bag, and I hang it at my gate. So what you might want to do is if I become a registered customer with you, you charge me $10, you prepare a laundry bag and print my um, identification number on it. So every time your laundry man comes to my property, he picks up that bag from my front door and puts an empty bag for me. Is that the sort of business that you run? Yes, yes. Uh, All right, well, we, we are catering hotels, residents, airports. Well, why don't you contact Singapore? me? You want my business? Contact me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? I will contact you, right. sir. But you don't know how much trouble I went through so, through COVID-19. Yeah. Can I ask you, Jesuito, did you only come up with this app during COVID-19 or was it there before? No, uh, that's all. we are already have so before what, the COVID. So yeah. how and did then, you uh, suffer? We're, we're still developing. But how after, did you suffer? After if you had we the did, app. Yeah. Actually, we did not suffer because we have BCP. So that's why my question is only intend, intended uh -huh. for the small company. Can I, can I give you some example, Jesuito? I believe yeah. you work in Singapore and probably your owner is a multinational and he's prepared to spend money, all right? 
That's yes, why yes, he's yes. got experts like you. But Jesuito, there's a lot of laundries in Singapore, and all these laundries feed their customers into a warehouse or a central operating laundry. All right. Now, some of the old traditional, like the old English laundry or whatever it's called, they have a big factory um, that I developed a BCP plan for many years ago. But since then, their owner changed. A more conservative Chinese businessman bought them. So all the BC plans that I developed, he said, are not important. And guess when they became important? When COVID-19 started, six months into COVID, he had no business. He was generating zero because he had no input of dirty laundry coming in. Singapore was under lockdown. No one was sending him laundry. He called me. He said, help me. I said, the only way I can help you is to get someone to develop an app and you employ two drivers. Well, it took us four months to do that. And then his business picked up. But then guess what? He decided that the drivers were wasting too much time and he didn't want to pay drivers anymore. So then he decided to stop the delivery service. Six months into COVID-19, he raised his hand again. He said, I, you know, the government's offering us loans now. I'm going to get a loan. I want to kickstart all this online stuff again. But do you understand what I mean, Jesuito? There is a different mindset in businessmen, Jesuito. It, it's what the country needs or what the world needs is more business critical people like me and you. And, you know, I feel sorry for these businesses that failed because, you know, the government provided so much money that no one needed to fail. They could have all found a way. There was people prepared to develop mobile apps for $2,000 that could have got their businesses working with just a media campaign on Facebook or social media. But some of these businesses were not prepared to do it. And what has happened now is because of COVID, they've learned to lesson. So guess what? Now they all want to get it done. And because now everybody's rushing, guess what's happened to the price of developing a mobile app? It's gone up because all these businesses now want a mobile app. Do you understand yes. where I'm coming yes. from, Jesuito? Yes, yes, I fully understand. But listen, it's great to have you as a student, and I'd love to have you as my laundry um, service provider. So do send me an email today saying, hello, Wally, here's our company, and please become a customer. Not only will I become your lecturer, BizTalk, but I'd also like to become your customer. That would save me a lot of headache. Thank you maybe, so much for maybe asking not the only question. Maybe not only a partner as a professor, or maybe it can be a partner when I put up a business in Philippines. I would love to do that. I would love to help you with that. And I would love yeah. to give you advice. It would be my absolute pleasure, sir. And, yeah. you know, I hope that this is, I hope that gives you the edge because part of studying with us is to make you feel like a student where you can get guidance. And that gives me satisfaction. For 38 years, I've been training students bachelor's, master's, and I've also supervised PhD students. And I get pleasure out of having students like you. Thank you for Thank allowing you, me sir. the opportunity. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Good afternoon. Thanks. Thank you, too. Okay. Who else would like to talk to me? I've got hands going up here. All right. I've got uh, Marissa Crisilla Guzman is next in the queue. Hello, M Maria. Can you open your microphone? Go ahead. Hi, sir. Really good af after or good evening. That's <laughs> uh, okay. Oh, yeah, I'm uh, Ia Bo and I'm from the Philippines. I'm actually yes. a PhD engineer here in the Philippines. Yeah. So I'm quite aware about the BCP. So, yeah. so I just have a question. Since uh, I think ever since the COVID started, uh, the approaches that we are being used about the development and then the changes or innovations is under the crisis management since it's already started. It's a reactive um, approach with yeah. all of the things that had happened in COVID. Yeah. So right. I'm just quite um, confused about the business continuity versus all right. you the see, crisis management. Crisis management is part of business continuity management. So part of business continuity management is to understand what the risks or what the disasters or what potential risks you face. And then mm -hmm. it's to have a crisis management plan developed. So you can only have a crisis management plan if you've done business continuity management analysis, if you've looked at risk analysis, all right? So let me just explain. Crisis management is only one element, but mm -hmm. crisis management will only help you activate during a crisis, all right? Do you understand that? But then you have to go back from crisis 
back to restore normal operation. So that crisis management plan, in order for it to be effective, it must carry on to a business continuity management plan that would allow sufficient process to restore normal operation. And I might be getting complicated, but let me give you a simple example. Singapore Airlines sent, I think, 30 or 40 A380 aircraft. Those aircraft are worth about $450 million each. They parked them in a desert in Australia with the engines covered for two years. You're an engineer, right? So you yeah, know correct. you know what the impact on an engine being covered and cold for two years is, right? Yes. So engineering wise crisis management would say as soon as those aircraft cannot operate fly them to a storage space which is economical store them there because if you let the engine get cold at Changi airport and then you can't afford to store them there you have to move them so as soon as Singapore Airlines knew that there was a crisis and they couldn't fly passengers Immediately within two days, they relocated the 20 aircraft to a parking space in another part of the world. And then slowly they followed all their 737 and 777 fleet, etc. All right. So part of crisis management says move them there. The other part of crisis management would be to deal with how to secure them over there and then how to restore them and bring them back at the end of the crisis. Right. OK. Mm -hmm. All right, so first step, get the aircraft parked, get them secured, get them protected because they're $450 million assets. 450 million times 30, you can do the maths. So if you can't move them to a safe place and make sure that the equipment is protected, the engines are covered, everything is locked, and you don't do that and they get vandalized, crisis management has failed, right? The other thing you need to do is you need to establish, I can't fly passengers, I can fly cargo. Do I have enough cargo jets? Yes. If not, can I use some of my passenger jets and turn them into cargo jets? That's part of crisis management. So they could keep generating revenue. Some airlines did that very quickly. The day after COVID, they took the aircraft into the hangar. They took out all the seats. They covered it with plastic and put it into cargo operations. The biggest airlines in the world converted nearly 30 of their aircraft like that. But why did they do that? Because they had a crisis management plan. They said that if the business for passengers stop and we can't restore within 72 hours or seven days, we look at our cargo business and we convert the aircraft. The process of conversion is this. Team A will look after this aircraft. Team B will look after this. Team C will look after this. The seats will be taken out. They'll be stored in containers and numbered. The containers will be stored in a warehouse. The aircraft will go into cargo operation. So all of this is part of crisis management. Is that right? Yes, it's the yes, same yes. in your country company if you can no longer go into production because everybody's under lockdown you cannot just leave the machinery in an unsafe state you probably would have to switch everything off make sure it's secured the electricity is secured if you use diesel or raw material you'd have to secure it you'd have to make sure your raw material doesn't run out of use by date or expiry date you'd have to make sure your engineering team secures the plant and locks it down right Yes, sir. That's part of crisis management. And the other part of crisis management is as the crisis starts to go away, your team would have to come in to bring the factory back up to start operation. But you might not be able to do that overnight. It might be a slow process, right? Correct? Yes, sir. Okay. So part of that resumption plan is you can get it back to normal. But once you get it back to normal, you know, you get the minimal operation back, then the restoration to full speed must be part of BCP because it's no longer a crisis. Do you understand me? Yeah, so sure. what you need to appreciate, Maria, you need to think as an engineer. What is crisis? Crisis is the reaction to the disaster. That's where you kick in, right? Okay. Yes, sir. Then what, where do you come in again? You come in at the, once the crisis comes to an end, you are involved in un turning down that crisis management plan, right? Restoring it. 
you get the restoration started. But once you've got it started, it might take seven to 10 days or three months to go back into full scale manufacture. That time, that three months is part of a BCP plan because the engineers and crisis management team have to go back to normal operation. Do you understand that? And it's yes, quite yeah. common that if you're part of crisis management, you're also part of the BCP management team. Do you understand that? But in order for you to understand crisis management, you must understand the total business continuity management plan. Has your company shared that with you or are you only trained in crisis management? Uh, we have our, our ISO, right. our, our company, yes. Okay. And have you read that? Do you understand the BCP function in the ISO? Uh, yes, sir. We have the ISO 27001 for disaster only. Okay, so, great. Well, you should know the answers then. You're, you're very well <laughs> equipped. All right. I, I just spent three days helping somebody understand that and convincing them that they need to get it. But Maria, you would know that under the ISO 45000 code, you need to make sure that you keep your crisis management plan continuously being checked and monitored you need to keep it up to date and you need to do emergency drills every so often which yeah. i assume you do all right so thank you for reaffirming that and maria if you need any help or you think that i can give you ideas on how to improve what you have you're welcome to send me an email at any time maria and i it's great to hear you talk about these ideas and share them with the other students here today I, it makes me so happy to have students like yourself and the other gentlemen share real industry experience. Thank you so much, Maria. Thank you, Sir Wally. Thank You're you, welcome. Paul. Thank you. Okay, uh, who else would like to talk to me? Okay, Mila, I don't usually talk to people unless your camera's on. I'm going to make uh, an allowance today. Are you there, Mila? Can you unmute your microphone, Mila? Mila, can you unmute your microphone? No? Okay. Mary Ann Bedroom, would you like? Hello, Mila. No, no microphone. Okay. Um, hi, hi, Mary Ann. Can I? How can I help you? Unmute your microphone. Are you there, Mary Ann? Hello. Hi. Yes, how hi, can sir, I help you? Hi. hi. How are yes, you? Sir. Good. I'm fine. Thank you. Yes, What's sir. I question? need some. Uh, uh, I want to. I want some help about. I build some. Uh, I start already my business, and uh, I have a big. Team, so I need more, uh, more, you know, to, to, to guide me. How can I improve? And I, uh, and they gave me a chance to travel abroad. So I, I need more, uh, more. Okay, uh, Mary, need, Mary Ann, I let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. You drop me an email. Tell me what your business is and how big you've grown. And let me know what time you have some time. I will call you and talk to you on WhatsApp and give you some advice. Would that be okay? Okay, yes. All right, Thank but Mary Ann, I need to understand what your business is and how big it's growing. Unless I understand yes. that, I can't give you correct advice. What sort of business is it, Mary Ann? What do you do? I, uh, I am a sales agent, sir, from the big company in my country. So... What is the company? What sort of product? It's the SM Development Corporation. Yeah, but what do you develop? What it's sort for of product? The, from properties. It's the properties. So you basically Any sell property. property. All right. Well, yes. get, drop me an email and I'll see how I can help you. No problem. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank, Thank you very you so much. much. Goodbye. Okay. All right. Uh, let's go to the next one. I have uh, two people here. Romeo. Uh, Gail Bali. Gail, Gail Bali. Yeah. Romeo. Hi. How are you? Can you unmute your microphone, sir? Hello, Romeo. Hi. Hello. How, how can I help you? Um, I want to appreciate your, your teachings here. Here in Africa, we are benefiting a lot. That is something that most of the companies, they are, they are not implementing that idea. But my wish is to ask for your help to help me. Like I want to like uh, know more, more about that uh, plan because I want to mentor, I want to help a small business here around Africa. Uh, how to deal with the problem. Okay, Bali, if you send me an email, my email address is in the chat box. If you send me an email, can you go to the chat box? 
Mr. Gorbin, yes. can you repeat the email address and the subject, please? You go to the chat box, send me an email with the subject that my colleague has typed. Tell me I have a business in Africa. Can you share the lesson material with me? And I will do that for you. And after you've done that, if you have questions, just drop me an email. I'd be happy to call you and explain them to you. All right? I will definitely do that, sir. Thank you very much for your time today. It's a pleasure to see you as one of our students. Thank, Thank you. you, sir. All right, I can only take two more people. Um, I Sorry, we're, I have a class coming up. I can only speak to three more people, no more. So Jagat, Mary Lou and Iris, um, that's it. I can't speak to anyone else. Apple, you just popped up. So that's it, no one after Apple. All right, let's go to the next person here. Jagat, are you there? Can you unmute your microphone, Jagat? Hi, Jagat. Are you there, Mr. Jagat? No, he's not there. Okay, next, um, let's talk to Mary Lou. Hi, Mary Lou, how are you? Can you unmute your microphone, Mary Lou? Hi, Mary Lou. Yeah, hello. Hi, what's hello. your question? Hi. Hi. What's Good your question? Okay. Hi, Miss Mary Lou from Malaysia. Okay, yeah. the yeah. question is, I have a small business there in the Philippines, but since the COVID-19 is well, you know, smaller scale uh, coming back. But uh, would you recommend me an advice for what I have to be improving? Huh? Because uh, some of my customer now can't buy again. Can I ask you a of, question? Uh, what sort of business is it? What What do you sell? Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, small piggery. Piggery. Small bakery. Piggery. Yeah. Piggery. All right. So okay. you grow pigs. Yeah. So you sell live yeah, pigs? Yeah. You sell slaughtered pigs or live pigs? Uh, actually, I have three mother pigs. So, right. uh, yeah. So okay. this, yeah. All right. So you grow the, pigs for market. The I understand. Runs slowly. Okay. Yeah. Uh, to be Would honest you with you, any advice? Be, be, for, to be honest with you, Mary Lou, I don't know anything about running a meatery or piggery business. It's not my expertise. But listen, young lady, that doesn't mean <laughs> I don't that. try. If you drop me an email today or tomorrow, tell me about your business model. Okay. Tell me about how you used to have a successful business before. Tell me about the problems now that customers have mm -hmm. gone elsewhere and you can't get them back. Let me talk to some of my colleague academics that teach the same subject and we will come back to you with some ideas. Would that help you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, thank you so much. You're yeah. welcome. You're welcome. Thank you so much. Goodbye. All right, I can only talk to two more people, I'm afraid. Um, okay, I'm sorry. Iris, you just came up. I'm sorry, girls. I have to go to another class. I will not speak to any more. Iris, Apple, and Amal, you're the last three people. No one else, all right? Okay, who was next in the queue? Amal, go ahead. Amal, go ahead. Yes, Amal, go ahead. Unmute your microphone, Amal. Hi, Amal, go uh, ahead. Sir, uh, sir, I wanted your advice about how, like, according to this business management field that I'm studying, yes. I want your advice, like, which job is better for this um, Amal, if you drop me an email, Amal, and I will give you a list of jobs. All right, but Amal, listen. Like, like, uh, like, there's certain like, there are lots of jobs, and uh, I recently applied for a digital marketing job, but that job did not. That job failed because I was not getting the points okay. about what to do. Amal, so Amal, Amal, Amal hear me. Amal, good. hear me, hear me. Send me an email. Tell me about your experience. Tell me about the jobs you have applied for and failed. Just say, I've applied for digital marketing, failed. I applied for computer analysts, failed. This is my background. This is what I'm studying. What jobs do you think I should apply for? And I will reply to you. Okay, right? sir. You're Thank welcome. You, sir. Thank Take you, Take care. It's my pleasure. Okay, let's go to Apple. Apple May. Hi, Apple May. I'm sorry, you're the second last in the queue. Go ahead, Apple. Hi, how are you, gorgeous? How can I help you today? Um, actually, sir, I don't want to ask a question because I don't have anything in mind, but I just want to thank you for, you know, the lectures that you're giving us and you're Apple, such a 
Apple, I, I, I am an academic. My passion is teaching. What I like is that you guys keep learning and I hope that you will take the knowledge and learn from it. I hope that you just do it for certificates because certificates mean nothing unless you can use the knowledge. I want to see you study. I want to see you graduate and I want to see you live a life above the poverty line. All right. And you know, Apple, you know how much I care about my students. This is not your first time in one of my sessions. All right. Apple, I know how motivated you are. I know how much you've changed since the first lesson you attended with us. I want you to keep motivated and keep studying. I look forward to seeing you at the graduation soon. Thank you, Apple. I'll see you soon. Thank you. Goodbye. Thank you. Okay, let's go to Iris. Iris, your lucky last young lady. How are you today? You're looking beautiful. How are you, Iris? Thank you. Thank you. Uh, you hear me? Is that yes, working I can. Now? Yeah, go ahead. How can I help Sorry, you? Sorry, we had floods here, so we are renovating. I had uh, to move to a new house. Yes. I'm so sorry about that. I'm living in Indonesia. I'm German. And yes. I, I'm having two expertise. I'm a spiritual person, so I'm certified tarot reader, gypsy tarot reader. Yeah. And I'm a facilitist. I started my business when I was 19. And it God was bless running you. well. But then I had to uh, do a private decision to go to school again. Right. I think it's 23. So I studied home economics and nutrition because I got a high school uh, similar diploma with this one as well. As it's a dual uh, diploma system in Germany for vocational. So I did when I was in 2011, um, I'm getting 33. I also was certified as a tarot reader. But I never started my business. So I wonder how post-corona, how can I start my total business? Because there's many competition out there. But I'm clairvoyant. I'm really, I'm seeing, okay. I'm feeling, I'm not a uh, fake like me. All right, okay, and I would Iris. I like to help people. Okay, Iris, it's, it's hear me out, hear me out. Are you yeah. currently studying with Kingston International School? What are you studying? Yeah, Do you... Okay, all yeah, right. Um, Okay. administration actually all right good it's excellent excellent okay all right so you're one of our students as you all are yeah. what i suggest you do bridget what you're asking me it's a big question gorgeous what you need to do bridget you need to start behaving like a student and like an academic all right so what you need to do is draft me an email tell me about your background okay tell me what you're studying mm -hmm. now tell me what sort of business you want to build tell me yeah. what plan or business strategy you have and then ask me the questions that you want me to help you with and i will answer would that yeah. help you bridget i i think so i think so yeah of course um, right. i know okay. this cannot be answered like that but i have to start somewhere right yeah well yeah but iris you know you're a student and let me tell you iris if you ask me a big question like that now yeah. I need three yeah. to four hours to give you a proper answer and I oh, can't wow. keep this yeah. going. All right. So if you okay. want to learn, no, hear me, young lady, don't yeah. say, okay, slow down, slow down. I know you're hungry to become successful. I know you're passionate, but passion requires knowledge. Knowledge mm. comes from learning. You're on the mm -hmm. right track because through the diploma in business administration that you're studying with us, okay, or postgraduate, what are you doing? Diploma or postgraduate? Which one are you studying? I do the diploma because it okay. was not enough for the postgraduate. All right. Okay. All right. So you're doing our diploma in business and sales management. Yes. Okay, good. So during that class, you're going to do strategic marketing and all the elements, which you'll learn mm -hmm. a lot more skills by the time you graduate. But what I'm suggesting yes. to you in the next five yes. or 10 days is start yes. penning out an um, a two or three page document explaining what you have, what you know, what your dream or business is, what you know about that business and what help you need. And I will be happy to reply to your email and if need be, arrange to talk to you and give you some advice. Would that help you? Are you there? Hello, are you there, Bridget? Are you there, Bridget? 
I'm sorry, I've lost you, Bridget, but please send me an email and I look forward to seeing you as a student. And I'm confident that by the time you graduate, Bridget, you will have learnt much more. And I will see you during your lectures, hopefully. But please, Bridget, send me an email and let me help you. I would like to see you succeed, not only and graduate as a student, but also start your own business. That would give me great positive motivation. Thank you, everybody. Ladies and gentlemen, from me, Wally Rauder, um, your course uh, facilitator today. It's been my pleasure to talk to you about business continuity management and the importance of business continuity management. As my last PowerPoint said, don't be afraid to realize the truth about your business structure. Don't be scared to know or realize that you don't really know what's happening in your business. Until you are prepared to face the truth and understand what the dangers or what the failures in your business are and how to deal with them during a disaster, then you don't really know your business. And that is a fact. Thank you so much for joining me today. I look forward to seeing you at BizTalk. Um, I think it's going to be BizTalk 55 or BizTalk 56. I look forward to seeing you in your normal diploma and postgraduate diploma. Study hard. Remember, Education is an asset that will live with you for the rest of your life. Don't settle for a pass, settle for nothing less than a high distinction. I'm so proud to have you as our students. I'm so proud to have you join my lesson today. Thank you, everybody. From here in Singapore at 7 p.m. on a nice wet day, I say good night. God bless you all. I love you all. Goodbye, everyone. Goodbye, um, Hey Gwyn Min. Goodbye, Augustine Corrigador. Goodbye, everybody. Goodbye. Take care, everybody. God bless you all.